Hi, it's Melanie from Shimmer, and today we are going to do a story time video on why we use an autoclave at work to sterilize our nail implements. I'm going to tell you a beautiful story about my ingrown toenail and my ingrown toenail surgery. As a warning, I will go into a tiny detail about my toenail surgery and uh, the symptoms that I had before the surgery. I also do want to talk about the gel that they sent me home with because this is fascinating from a consumer's a point of view. You will not believe what is actually in this as I turned over the ingredient list. You may be asking if you are not in the medical field, normal human being, not sure why I'm making this video, what is an autoclave? That is an instrument that steam sterilizes implements. There's a huge difference between sterilizing and disinfecting. Lately, I've seen a lot of UV cabinets and lights out there that say that they're a UV sterilizer. You read the instructions, it says that it kills 99% of whatever's on the surface. A sterilizer does not kill 99% of organisms on a surface. It kills 100% of organisms on a surface. So that's just something going around lately that I don't really like to see because I don't think it's being 100% transparent. What people may not know about the cosmetology field is we are related to medical industries. So while we can't save somebody's life, we can potentially prevent things and treat things, one being preventing skin cancer, very important. Another thing we do is clear up skin conditions such as rosacea and acne. They can be painful, they can be embarrassing, and they can spread all over your body. There are certain ways in which we overlap. There are estheticians who work in doctor's offices. There are hairstylists who treat people who are going through chemotherapy. There are a lot of different ways we bridge the gap and to not use medical equipment in your salon or spa just kind of boggles my mind. Uh, that's not what I set out to do. And I need to tell you the story of why we use medical equipment at Shimmer. I got a pedicure from somebody that I know in the industry, and about a week later, my toenail started to hurt. Never happened before, you know, maybe I would get slight ingrowns on under my nail. And I need to point out that that was just a contingency. So it was a week after I got a pedicure. It could have been other things. It might not necessarily have been the implements that were used. It could have been my running shoes, you know, way I walk, way I jog, standing on my feet. However, uh, I haven't gotten an ingrown toenail like that since. Like a week goes by, my toe's feeling pretty sore. You know, like it's, I bump it on things and it hurts pretty bad. You know, whatever, it's me. I don't really pay too much attention to that. So. Month two rolls around. It's still kind of really hurting. I don't necessarily want to go in. I want to fix it on my own because I know people who've had surgeries and their toenail doesn't grow back, you know, exactly the same. You can clearly tell that this toe is inflamed. Something's going on. Um, I really need it looked at. It's not getting better. I pour peroxide on it. It bubbles. Not a good sign. Neosporin isn't helping. So I finally make a doctor's appointment. I cave. I go to an ingrown specialist that actually one of my staff members uh, told me about. I call this podiatrist and they can't get me in for a month. So I'm like, okay, cool, I'm just gonna deal with it. You know, slightest movement against this big toe on my right foot, and it is painful, extremely painful, which, you know, there's still me just going, oh, you know, this is gonna get better. I'm gonna feel great. This is just momentary discomfort. You know, I might yell out loud every time I tap my toe on something, but I'm gonna be fine. So I go in and the doctor's like, why did they schedule you out four weeks? He's like, usually we get people in that week of. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But you know, I'm not a complainer. I didn't call back. I didn't try to get my appointment moved up. That might be my own fault. So we go in and he tells me, yeah, we're going to have to do the surgery. And me, you know, I'm in this industry, I'm a cosmetologist, I know that everybody likes to look good, it's not just me. But I had this fear thinking that my toenail, a part of my body, is not going to grow back the same as it was. And I think that's still kind of what scares me to this day. Of course, I would rather have a, a malformed looking toenail than have an infection that could spread to my entire body. 
But at the same time, part of me is like, oh no, like what if it doesn't grow back? What if it looks really bad and when I wear sandals, I notice. I'm more concerned about what I think about it, not just everybody else, but I think at the same time, there was a little bit of you know, what is everybody else going to think of this toenail if it doesn't grow back. The worst part of an ingrown toenail surgery is the Novocaine, the large needle that they stick, basically it's in between your big toe and your first toe. Uh, that hurt more than uh, the actual surgery itself. So they numb you, you're sitting just in there for a while. Cool, cool. I had my studio spot at the time, so I was you know, more than happy to work on stuff for work from my cell phone. So the doctor checks on my toe, still not numb, leaves. Comes back, my toe is numb enough, this is great, so we're ready to start the surgery. So you lie back and then he takes out some clippers. So you don't really feel much, you know, it's very, very numb. And then you hear like the sound of a toenail clipper. They start at the base of the toenail and cut up and then kind of pull it out of the side. And I told him, I'm like, I wanna see this thing. When you pull this out of my foot because it's grown to the side, I wanna see it. So he did, he did show me. It was just this jagged little triangle of a nail that was digging into the side of my toe for like three months, which oh, I know. Do you love this video yet? <laughs> so, you know, what he does is he bandages the toe up and draws a little smiley face on it and sends you on your way with some Amerigel, which I also want to talk about because I find it fascinating. So basically, after going through inpatient surgery for a toenail, I decided that we're going to sterilize all of our nail implements. What do most nail salons do? Well, I'm happy that you asked. They drop their implements, their steel that is reusable, into a jar of disinfectant. Hope for the best. I can't tell you how long they keep them in there. I can't tell you what their practices are. I can't tell you if they even clean them in between people. No idea. But I can tell you that I never wanted anybody that I personally know, even if I don't know you personally, hello strangers, I don't want you to have to go through toe surgery. There's no way. Like, if you can do everything possible to prevent that, that's what I'm in the business of, preventing things from happening, preventing health conditions, staying up on maintenance of your body, because guess what? You only get one. The best way that I knew how to do that was to make sure that the surfaces of any steel reusable implements are completely sterile. Clean is one thing, disinfected is great, but if you're taking an implement and you're putting it underneath somebody's nail, if it could potentially draw blood because accidents do happen, how safe is it? Do I want to cross contaminate my body with Susie's skin cells or do I want a completely new dental autoclaved implement working on the surface of my nail? I like to think that a lot of salons don't put this into practice because they've never had a problem. But in my experience, anybody that I know who's been to a salon, not had a great experience, they are afraid to speak up. And it is hard to say, hey, guess what? I had this really gross toenail. You know, not everybody is comfortable sharing their stories. And I have to share mine because I want you to know how important it is to me. Disinfecting can work, but we have the technology to sterilize our implements. So we use a steam sterilizer. It is not, okay, here's 1% of Susie's DNA. Have that under your toenail. Have a great day. I do find my toe story the most fascinating because they sent me home with a Marigel, which is supposed to stop any infections. This has two plant extracts and six ingredients total. So I was like, what the heck? Like, how is this? In a Marigel, we have meadow sweet extract oak extract, something called oaken that they have trademarked, polyethylene glycol uh, 400 and 3350, so these stop this from being water soluble, and then water and zinc acetate, and zinc is one of my favorite minerals natural ingredients and then the medical field gives them a little boost so it stays on your skin. So being able to find naturally derived ingredients I think is great and we have the earth out there, we have it to use, we have it to harvest, we just have to take good care of it and we'll keep getting innovations like this. Love Amerigel, 
did not love toe surgery. That really sums me up perfectly and my second home perfectly. Use the medical advancements, have a plant base to go as natural as possible. Nature, technology, and then being compassionate and courteous and kind and treating somebody how you would wanna be treated as well when you're in their chair. Basically, that's my gory toenail surgery story and why I am such a neat freak at work and we follow procedures. It's up to you to treat yourself well at the end of the day. And by giving you some information, hopefully I can help you stay informed and I'll keep doing videos like this if you like them. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope that none of you have to go through that surgery, but if you do, we can commiserate in the comments. Thanks for joining me. Remember to be kind to yourself and others and never feel guilty about treating yourself well.